Now, when I refer to virtual recreation today, I'm talking about <laughs> doing something active. So basically our physical activity that we started about talking, to, talking about this morning, something active via a screen. So as you can imagine, many, many things could fall in this category. I'm not gonna do a comprehensive summary of everything. But again, given that um, opportunities for in-person physical activity are more limited for sure, they will definitely vary community by community. Also, we might expect that they'll go up and down depending on how things go in the next little while here. So it's good to be somewhat informed about your options in terms of doing things in a virtual format as well. So there are a couple of different ways we can think about this. Again, these are sort of my definitions and ways of thinking about it. They're not necessarily official, but you can have a live, like a live format programming like we're doing right now where you see me and I'm live and, and, and that sort of thing. So usually those are done like, for example, you would register and sign up for like a Zoom version. I have friends, adult friends who are doing fitness this way right now in their living room. <laughs> uh, or there's lots of recorded stuff in the world of the internet, right? That you might be choosing to use as a resource to help your child maintain physical activity right now. So let's just think about this for a second. Pros and cons of virtual recreation. I've listed a few to get us started. So some of the positives that I see, uh, it's something to do, right? And my motto during COVID or one of them <laughs> is something is better than nothing, right? So I was talking to a friend of mine last night and her son is in uh, minor hockey and hockey is his life. Uh, it is truly the thing that gets him out of bed in the morning. He loves it. And she was saying that it's really, really tough this year because parents are not allowed in the building. So although they've got all these systems in place now and her son is starting to play games, uh, they can't watch him. So it's hard, right? There's a whole year where she won't get to watch her son play hockey. And that's, you know, a big part of their family experience. And, uh, and we kind of looped around at the end of the conversation. We said, but yeah, something is better than nothing, right? Like at least her son gets to play, at least he's getting that outlet. So I feel very much the same about virtual recreation. It's like, it's not perfect. There are many challenges associated, but something is probably better than nothing. So one of the major challenges associated with virtual recreation is for many kids, it, it's going to require some support from the caregiver. Um, and sometimes, let's be honest, having your child go to a recreational activity means that you get to do something else. Uh, and someone else is, there are so many benefits to that too, just in terms of your child's learning to work with someone else, getting to meet other people. This is kind of you continuing to need to be that support, which requires energy, right? So in terms of positives, you could get some form of physical activity this way. One of the challenges is usually things you're doing in front of a screen tend to be not as vigorous as if you're, you know, out on a field and able to run around. One of the positive things is it makes you still feel connected, right? So I'm gonna talk in a minute about some of the programs Canucks Autism Network is doing right now and we're hearing that from members is that even showing up together on Zoom, they still feel together, part of a community. Uh, and a challenge is of course, it doesn't feel the same as gathering in person, right? Uh, one of the positives can be that it's sort of available on demand sometimes, right? If you've got these recorded sessions, you can do them whenever you want. Now the flip side of that is, Will you do them, <laughs> right? It's different. Like if you're signed up in the community for an activity where you're scheduled and maybe you even had to pay a fee to participate, you tend to show up because people are counting on you and there's that kind of accountability built in. Whereas if it's something that's just sort of on YouTube and you can do it whenever you want, you may or may not do it, right? And I'm sure there's many others, okay? So actually in the interest of time, I think I'm gonna skip this Mentimeter poll. Um, because I'm sure I don't, I, don't, I don't quite know everyone's experience at this point with virtual recreation, but let's just say there are other pros, there are other cons to be sure. So I'll loop back to getting a little bit more feedback from you after we talk a little bit about some of the options that are actually available out there right now. Sorry, I'm gonna be self-serving and talk about CAN. <laughs> I don't think it's actually self-serving though, because um, these are programs that we'd love to see teachers, you referring, uh, kids you may know to them, and also parents, of course, we'd love to see you involved with these things. So I'm gonna start by talking about CAN because we've also done both types of things that I just described. So I think it'll provide us with some good examples to think about participation uh, in terms of both of those categories. 
if anything I'm saying right now is interesting to you, the link to check it out is canucksautism.ca slash online. I'm sure we can make that available to you after um, the presentation as well. So when COVID hit, uh, we recorded two, we essentially recorded two programs. So uh, in in-person programming, two of the programs that Canucks Autism Network offers on a regular basis, one is called Active, and it's designed for three to six-year-olds, and the other is called Multisport, and it's designed for seven to 12-year-olds. And in an in-person format, you know, it's a lot of games uh, that really focus on essentially physical literacy. And what I mean by that is getting kids moving, getting them learning different types of movement skills, so running, jumping, turning, throwing, kicking, all those types of things. Uh, and when COVID hit, we essentially put one whole series of actives, so eight sessions online, recorded, pre-recorded, and then we did the same for the multi-sport model, which is that slightly older version. So you have Coach Robbie in the picture, one of my favorite humans on the earth, uh, coaching the, uh, he did the multi-sport program. And then Coach Niche, if any of you have attended CAN programs, you've probably met Coach Niche. He did all of the um, active. And in normal in-person programs, these would be 45 to 60 minutes. That really is very challenging, <laughs> especially if you've got your three-year-old. So we made them 10 to 20 minutes each. Um, they, it doesn't require any special equipment, so you're seeing things like them doing activities with balls of socks as opposed to you know, special nets and other equipment that we might use. They're free, they're on the website, you don't need to register, you don't need anything, they're just there. So that would be an example of an on-demand virtual resource to help get kids active right now. We did a few that were also a little bit older, geared a little bit older. Um, and uh, we had this whole series called Wellness Wednesdays that we ran on social media. Um, these were, again, kind of quick activities. So we had animal yoga with Coach Hallie. We had a Tabata workshop with Coach Tannis. That's like, for those of you who don't know, that's like hardcore. <laughs> no, not extremely hardcore, but it's like intense, more intense fitness. Coach Tannis um, coaches our fitness program. Those are also just recorded sitting on the website. You can check them out. Now, we were not the only organization and have not and continue to not be the organization, only organization that is coming up with these virtual, pre-recorded online resources for families right now. Um, so in a second, I'm going to throw actually a whole bunch of um, links up for you. But just one that I'll speak about briefly right now because it also fits this same category of pre-recorded on demand. Um, so BC Athletics, for those of you who don't know, athletics is like track and field <laughs> so, is how I understood it. Um, and uh, they're a provincial sport organization. They're awesome. Like we've done a lot of events and training with BC Athletics. They have a program called Run, Jump, Grow, Wheel which is a program that they'll bring into schools. They've run it with our kids. They come and set up stations that introduce kids to essentially those fundamental skills associated with their sport. So running, jumping, like you think about standing long jump, all those types of things. Throwing, obviously in athletics, there's all kinds of throwing events. And then they've added wheel from an inclusion perspective, which is really wonderful. Um, so I just did a screenshot there on their website. And again, the whole link will be up in a second. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different workouts available that they've done that are meant to give um, that kind of at-home opportunity for people to get active, to kind of give them some ideas about how they could throw together a quick workout at home. So I thought this was a pretty fun one. Dance party, three to five minutes. They even include links to dance steps or music if you want. And then they talk about how you could go out and do a little jog, and they also are really... Um, kind and mentioning that you can of course walk as well and you can do it as long as you like and then have a stretch fest and they include a video with examples of stretching that you can do. So that's a really nice resource that they put together absolutely free on their website for anyone to access. Switching gears, um, at Canucks Autism Network we've also done the, we've also gone the route of offering registered live virtual programs. So what I mean by that is um, you access them through our registration system. They are set days and times. So you show up on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. 
you're in a class. Uh, so we are running the active program, the multi-sport program. I'll talk about all of them in a minute. So what you would see if you signed up for this is there'd be, um, usually there's about eight kids in the class. You'll see two CAN coaches on the Zoom screen as well. We also have someone behind the scenes moderating. Uh, and the coaches lead stuff and the kids follow along and it is well and truly hilarious. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a huge learning curve for us because it's very different than offering programs in person. I will be honest with you, for some families it has been awesome, like the kids are very engaged, it's getting them active. For other families it has been a spectacular fail. And that's okay, right? I mean, I'm not happy that it's been a fail for them, but I think we have to recognize with all the stuff that we're talking about, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, the way we've designed our registered programs is to, again, try to minimize the need for equipment, something that's, that's, um, that we're finding is pretty much essential for the children's programs is that caregiver participation. Not for the youth and adult, for the youth and adult virtual programs, um, we don't require that, and most of our youth and adults do attend independently. Um, yeah. So let me show you the things we're running this fall, just to give you a sample of what we're doing. We have three virtual hockey clinics. We piloted this in the summer, and we had something like 75 people register, um, which was pretty cool. And we actually have a partner for this, um, so someone who is an NHL alumni. He's coaching alongside a CAN coach. Uh, no special equipment needed and just meant to teach some introductory hockey skills. And I happen to know that for our fall hockey clinics, we still have spaces. So if you're watching today and you go to the CAN website, you would see right on the, um, the landing page how to register for those programs. Another program that I'm just super thrilled that we're able to offer this fall is um, some of you may be familiar with Challenger Baseball. So Challenger Baseball is a program that's national. It's, uh, it is not autism specific. They are teams that are set up um, community by community and they're for children with all types of diverse abilities, um, including children with physical disabilities. Uh, Challenger Baseball, just, I'm sorry, I'm side noting on Challenger Baseball, but briefly, they have undergone a massive change in the past two years. Um, I now sit on their national advisory group. They are really, really taking a lot of steps to do some cool things with that program. So anyhow, for their virtual program, what's cool is they uh, had the funding to put together activity kits for every child who registers, which are, let me tell you, amazing. <laughs> like, I can't believe, it's like Christmas when the kids get their activity kit. It's like balls and agility ladder and all these cool things. And we had a massive response when we opened registration for this program. I suspect that some of it is that parents knew that the equipment would be provided. So obviously parents have different amounts of equipment in their house and people seemed really excited for this and free stuff, right? Who doesn't like free stuff? So that's cool. And that one is, again, it's mostly physical literacy st style activities. So just games that get kids moving. But there are some introductory baseball skills in that one as well, which is kind of fun. So some of you were asking about youth and adults. Uh, in the youth and adult realm, we are have been since April offering a virtual fitness class that's registered. Uh, it's run by like a personal trainer, so someone who really knows what they're doing. Um, it's meant to be very much along the same lines of no special equipment needed, just ways to get moving at home. Um, and it's been a, a pretty big success as well up to this point. So we'll continue to offer that in the new year. So if you have questions about any of those programs, um, like I said, that's the link, canucksautism.ca slash online. For the on-demand programs that are on the website there, you need nothing, like you just click on it, it's there, you can watch it. For the registered programs, that's the hockey clinics, the Challenger Baseball, the youth and adult fitness. You do need to register through the registration system, which requires a CAN membership. If you're not familiar with how CAN memberships work, it's $25 for the year to access programs. You can use autism funding and get that reimbursed if you have autism funding remaining. Um, and then, yeah, you're in the system. So please check it out. Uh, and as I did mention before, we work with a number of different partners who have also shared with us their version of this. So what are they doing 
to get some virtual activities available for kids right now and youth as well. You will find all of these links also on our website, the one I just mentioned. Um, and I'm happy to make these available for ACT afterwards as well if they'd like the actual URLs to get you to these activities. How many people out there have tried some type of virtual recreation option for their child or youth or adult uh, that they're supporting sometime during this COVID period? Good stuff. Let's skip ahead to the next question here. Oh, a couple not. It's a couple not yet. That's okay. And really, like, with the virtual rec, as I said, with the pros and cons, there are definite pros and cons. <laughs> okay, so let's hear. For those of you so far who have attempted some type of virtual recreation, meaning, uh, remember, my definition at the beginning was, you use something on a screen to help get someone active. How was your experience? Positive, negative, or mixed? Oh, I, I like the word challenging. Positive, challenging, or mixed? Lots of mixed. <laughs> That makes sense. So for some of you, I'm assuming mixed means you've tried some things that have worked well, others that have not worked well, or you're doing some things and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Yoga videos on YouTube. So YouTube is the one I was looking for. <laughs> YouTube is like, as we all know, this monstrous wormhole, but um, there's a heck of a lot of stuff on YouTube around activities, right? Um, again, uh, you got to know your kid and what is going to make sense for them or what they're interested in. But many, many, many things, um, you'd, you'd be shocked. Like you could Google on YouTube and find, oh, okay, here's a 10 minute session of somebody doing this. Like even something like baseball skills, right? Beginner baseball skills, um, hockey workout, right? Like really sky's the limit with creativity and finding some little short videos to help get people moving. YouTube tutorials. Yep. There we go. Video games, dance. We dance, is that the one? That really does get you up and moving, so good stuff. My son's Taekwondo school started doing lessons virtually. Oh, cool, that's great. Yeah, Four Cuts Arts, Wii Sports. I don't know what Go Noodle is, but that's another one I'm gonna have to go check out after that, that's cool. Dance, yep. So certainly, and again, I'm positive this depends on where you live and what's going on. Um, many organizations have absolutely pivoted their um, Offerings to online right now? BCR, oh, who's watching from BCRPA? This is cool. BCRPA virtual fitness classes. I didn't even know that was a thing. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. So that's that BC Parks and Recreation Association website. Zumba, American Heart Foundation. This is great. Okay, this is why I asked this question because I knew that everyone would have some ideas here. And I hope that if you're following along at home, you have not forgotten about the handout. And uh, you'll notice I did leave a big space for you at the bottom of this page. Other virtual recreation options. And that's your chance to uh, write down some of these great ideas that people are sharing for us right now. Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, it's such a good one. 